Welcome to the Fortified Life Podcast, where we learn how to develop a dependency on Jesus in the marketplace. From the boardroom to the bathroom, God is with you. Here's our host, author, speaker, teacher, encourager, stewardship coach, and my husband, the man they call Mr. Fortified, Jason Davis. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Fortified Life Podcast. I am your host, Jason Davis, aka Mr. Fortify, and we have all types of guests every single week, authors, speakers, CEOs, coaches, leaders, and nonprofits that are passionate about developing a dependency on Jesus in the marketplace. And folks, it is no different this week. I am very excited to have this individual on. She and I have been talking a lot offline uh, over the last uh, month or so, and it's been uh, some time coming. We met, shout out to GCBN, the Georgia Christian Business Network, Beth Copeland. We met through her organization. And when I met this Lady, you'll see why she brings the fire. When I met her, I said, man, I got to have her on the show. (laughs) And a little bit of time went by, but we made it happen. Before I bring her on, let me introduce her to you. Larissa Jean, her love and passion to prepare the next generation of leaders is seen through her leadership as the founder of her business, The Gift Center. The Gift Center provides ninth through 12th grade gifted learners with leadership development, Christ-centered character development, and college and career readiness coaching. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Fortified Life, Larissa Jean. Larissa. Hello, Jason. Good evening to you and the Fortified Life family. I'm so honored to be on the platform tonight. It is truly an honor and a blessing. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Uh, Larissa, we've been talking a lot offline and folks, we'll, we'll get into a little bit in a second, uh, the partnership that we, we had, uh, especially uh, lately uh, with the gift center. But Larissa, mm-hmm. it's, uh, it's good to have you here. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here and I'm just so excited about how God has connected us and allowed us the opportunity to uh, engage and interact and just I'm so thankful for everything that you're doing in the community and thank you for just supporting what we're doing with the Gift Center. We're so appreciative. Absolutely. You're quite welcome. Larissa, when people look at your bio. Now we know the gift centers on there, but we know that you didn't wake up in 2024 and just boom, here it is. <laughs> so right. take us on a journey down memory lane of your professional background. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, the gift center, I like to say, actually started when I was four years old. If we're going to go down memory lane tonight, um, I have, since the age of four years old, have always wanted to teach. Um, That has been the mountain of influence that I know that the Lord uh, carved out for me very early on. And something that I encourage uh, parents and scholars through the Gift Center is that, you know, oftentimes we'll ask our children, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? I think we've all been asked that question and children will often respond, I want to be a nurse, I want to be a ballerina, I want to be a fireman. And, you know, can I challenge us tonight in reframing that question? And instead of asking our children, you know, what do you want to be? Really, the question should be, who are you already? Um, This is something that, you know, the Lord showed me years ago in that all of us, we are a purpose packaged in a person. And so we all are a purpose of God packaged in a person. And so at four, I knew I wanted to teach, went throughout elementary school, middle school, and I knew that was the mountain of influence that God had for me. And uh, flash forward to about middle school. 
I started to hear from other adults that, you know, had a pretty influential voice in my life. And I began to hear, well, you don't want to be a teacher. Teachers don't make any money. You know, that's not a lucrative field. And so I began to kind of steer away from what God was showing me at four years old. I would teach my teddy bears. I would teach my siblings and cousins. Um, My mother got me my first little blackboard when we used to have chalkboards back in the day. And I began to kind of listen to that voice. And I said, you know, upon entering high school, okay, I won't teach. I will go into um, medicine. I'll be a pediatrician because I love children and I love working with young people. Well, flash forward to end of high school and I'm sitting in uh, my AP British literature class. And I love that God is unconventional and he'll meet you where you are. Gave my life to the Lord at 14, and at 18, getting ready to graduate, uh, the Lord said to me, Larissa, I did not make you for medicine. I made you to teach. And that, Jason, really changed the whole trajectory of my life, just having that encounter with the Lord. For him to just reaffirm, going back to what I said before, it's not about what do you want to be, but who are you already? Who has God already created you to be? So I went throughout college. Um you know, just growing on my walk with the Lord. And by the time I graduated from college, you know, the Lord really began putting in my heart to um, go to Bible college and just kind of get further um, equipping on uh, the direction that the Lord wanted to take me. And this was the summer of 2011 at Beulah Heights University. Shout out to Beulah Heights University in Atlanta, Georgia. And that summer, I took an organizational leadership class with Dr. Bruce Tucker, one of my favorite professors at Beulah. And our capstone project for that particular summer course was if there's any organization that you would lead, what it, would it be? And I told the Lord, you know, Father, if there's any organization that you would have me to lead, I want to lead a school. I want to lead a school for you. So this This is 2011. Flash forward some more to 2016. And again, God is so intentional. He's in the details. So, Jason, I'm driving down uh, 316, Highway Mm. 316 in Athens. Uh, This was August 3rd of 2016. And I'm driving on Highway 316. And the Lord drops in my spirit the name of the school that he uh, would entrust me to steward and lead. He said, the gift center, your gift will make room for you. So Mm -hmm. 2016, he drops, um, you know, the seed of the gift center. And, you know, we kind of go on this journey of him downloading uh, the blueprint for the gift center. Um, And he told me that it would be a very unconventional, non-traditional school. And the Lord um, birthed the idea for the gift center as a center, a training and equipping center, a 21st century training center for leaders in which young people would learn to discover their God-given gifts. They would begin to sharpen those gifts, operate in those gifts, and steward those gifts for the glory of God. And I always get so passionate because, you know, when we started the story earlier together, uh, our children are a gift. And all of us have God-given gifts, whether it's one or it's multiple. And we have a responsibility to equip the next generation. Um, And God has really made it evident as time has progressed. uh, Gift Center will have its fifth birthday this August. Uh, We launched officially in the midst of the pandemic. And uh, when the Lord said, go ahead and launch this, I said, but it's a pandemic, God. And this was when all the schools shut down and parents are at home and children are at home and there was a lot of uncertainty. And the Lord said, this is the time to launch it because this was an answer to a problem that existed and really helping parents to realize how do I harness the gifts and God-given gifts in my children and really sharpen them to hit target for the mountains of influence that they are called to. Um, so that's who we are at the Gift Center. We are been charged by God to train up the Josephs and Daniels and Esthers of our time and really prepare them uh, to be the leaders that God needs for today. My God, Larissa, you were you were already preaching. 
and I was get I was getting I was getting excited. Yes. yes. <laughs> because yes, yes, you yes. said you said multiple things and I, I had the I had to hold myself because <laughs> you said a couple of mic drop statements. I just mm-hmm. I want, you know, the Bible talks about sila that we need to yeah. take a pause. One of those moments you had the nerve to say purpose <laughs> packaged in a yes. person that yes, like we could we could leave we could leave the show right now <laughs> purpose packaged in a person talk a little bit more about that larissa because i feel like when it comes to purpose and and, mm-hmm. and meaning um yes. that's a it's a discovery process but larissa well, you and i have talked about this offline i mean you're talking about purpose with ninth through 12th graders, but we've got people yeah. 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 yeah. years old yeah. walking around, hat not walk. And I'm not chiding. I'm just saying this is just for whatever reason, life background, whatever, um, right. aren't walking in purpose. So just unpack that for a second. Purpose packaged in a person. That's very Absolutely. intentional. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, you'll notice even, you know, the logo that the Lord downloaded for the gift center was a gift box. And I believe that, you know, when the scripture says all good and perfect gifts come from above. And I believe that God has uh, wired all of us for purpose. Uh, all of us have, you know, this desire deep down for more. And I believe God put that in us because, um, you know, I think about uh, Mark Twain, who said the two most important days in a person's life is when they're born and when they realize why, why they were born. And God is doesn't make any accidents. Um, he does everything intentional. And when we come into relationship with our creator, with our father, um, whose image that we bear, we are able to get that download to realize, hey, I'm not here taking up space. I'm not here by accident. I actually have a purpose from God that I have to steward and I'm responsible to execute that within the time frame that we have been given. And so, you know, when we talk about you are a purpose package in a person, we have to always remember, and we share this with every cohort, you know, God raises up uh, different leaders for their generation. Um, I love what it says in Acts when it says, you know, David, he served the purpose of God in his generation and he went to sleep. So when we get in alignment and we get, quiet with ourselves and we get at the feet of the Father and say, God, what am I here for? What have you anointed me to do? What have you graced me to do? Uh, Because all of that is a part of the purpose. And just like a gift box, God doesn't send anyone to the earth empty. We all have something to bring to the table. There is a contribution uh, for the kingdom that we are to execute. And I share this with our cohorts, uh, just like a gift box, after you have opened it up, and everything inside has been emptied out, we cannot go back to the Father full. We have to empty out everything that God has deposited. We have to leave the earth empty. And so I'm so passionate for our younger people to realize this. Um, and this is, these are things that we've talked about, Jason, and that uh, there's such a fight. There's such a war against this generation because they're carrying so much uh, from God. And so the enemy is working overtime to keep them distracted, to keep them not in purpose so that they are not fulfilling uh, their God-given assignments. And so when I tell people you are a purpose packaged in a person, you have been given everything from God to fulfill the assignment on your life, you know, what you're naturally graced to do, that's not an accident. You know, what you're naturally passionate about, that's not an accident. So we have to take inventory, really discover, you know, what has God put inside of you? How do you sharpen it? 
how are you a good steward of it? And then how do you operate in that so God gets glory and his kingdom can advance? Because that's why we're here, to glorify God, to bring others to God, and to advance the kingdom of God. Mm. Amen. Kingdom purpose, Larissa. I love that. Uh, two other things you said that were really powerful. Uh, not asking people what, but but who. And yeah. then... Uh, secondly, stewardship. Now, talk about that one. You know, I love stewardship too, Larissa, yes, but, but a lot of times yes. we attach stewardship to uh, money. Like, I, I have the big five that I call money, time, talent, health, and relationships. But yes. I've been contemplating that more. And I'm like, man, Larissa's on to something. I think number six has got to be purpose. <laughs> so, so talk yeah. about that, Larissa, because a lot of times, like, I think people un- understand, like, okay, I got to steward my money. And then, yeah. uh, uh, then I branch, okay, cool. I got to manage my, steward my time, um, my health, uh, my mm-hmm. talent, which kind of gets into gifts a little bit. Um, right. Money, time, talent, health relationships obviously but then yeah. wait a minute though stewarding my purpose that's like one of those you know when they do the little exploding emoji <laughs> Larissa's yeah, like yeah. wait a minute Mind blown. <laughs> you just you just dropped a number six I might add that to the list Larissa but talk about that because stewarding something like purpose that's a game changer yes yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I believe stewarding um, your purpose is so critical because it shifts our perspective to recognize, one, stewardship is about um, governing. It's about Mm. governing well what God has given us, right? And when we look at stewardship, we also have to look at it through the lens of management. We have to look at it as, okay, God has entrusted his purpose to us as his image bearers, as his sons, as his daughters, as his children. And we have to give an account back to the Father with what he has entrusted to us. And when I think about the scripture that says, you know, Jesus says, we, we got to occupy till he comes, right? Because we know the king is coming back and he gives these parables of, you know, the master, he goes far away and, you know, he comes back and before he left, he entrusted uh, something of value to each of his servants. And so the purpose that God has given us, it is of value. Uh, Part of that stewardship is recognizing my life doesn't even belong to me. That's Mm. the thing, Jason. Our life doesn't even belong to us. Um, When I started my relationship with the Lord at 14, going into high school, uh, it really was um, a definitive moment when you realize, okay, I belong to the Lord. So everything that pertains to this life he's given me, gifts, abilities, skill set, height, uh, languages, all the things that he's given it belongs to him. And so stewarding our purpose, it really brings a sense of sober mindedness because you realize, you know, my life doesn't belong to me. My life belongs to the Lord. And he has a purpose that he wants executed through uh, this life that he's given us. Uh, You look at, you know, different leaders that God used in Scripture, the Esthers, the Josephs, the Daniels, the Marys, uh, the Davids. They had a critical part to play in the redemption story. And if we all can look at, you know, this life that God has given us as this beautiful unfolding story, You and I have a part to play in that story, and part of that part in the story is stewarding every moment, every opportunity that God has given. So, again, the kingdom is being advanced, and so stewarding our purpose is recognizing that we have to give an account back to our creator, and we want to hear him say to us, well done, Jason, well done, Larissa, well done, daughter, son, good and faithful servant. Um, And that's 
those are the words that I live for. And I'm sure many of us listening on tonight, I want to live to hear those words from our father. Mm, The anticipation. I love it, Larissa. Folks, I told you all I was excited. I told you she she does what she does. <laughs> well, Larissa, we've been we've been teasing around it. We had to get the origin. We had to break down some things. And now the time has arrived. The gift center. Tell us about um what the gift center does and how you help the students that come through the gift center as that you prepare them. Uh, really for life. Amen. Amen. Well, it like I shared, it, it's my joy. It's my privilege. Um, so grateful to God to steward um, this vision concerning the gift center, uh, where again, we are a 21st century leadership academy and the gift center provides uh, ninth through 12th grade students. And I'm grateful to share that we've expanded, we've grown. Uh, we originally started with serving gifted ninth and 10th grade students and providing them with 10 months of leadership development. And part of that leadership development, we always share with our students the uh, foundational scripture for Gift Center comes from Proverbs 18, 16, which declares a man's gift will make room for him and bring him before great men. And before any platform, we know that we serve a God of preparation. So he will prepare and polish us before he puts any of his children on a platform. So through uh, those 10 months of leadership development, we're learning about interpersonal skills, interview skills. Um, Our students, our scholars start building their resumes as early as ninth grade. And in addition to leadership development, we're providing college and career readiness coaching. Uh, That was definitely one of the big things during the pandemic where students and families alike were very concerned about, you know, what is college going to look like? What is life after? for high school going to look like when the pandemic just kind of upended uh, the normal rhythm of the instructional year. So we provide that one-on-one coaching. These are customized cohorts where they're getting that one-on-one attention, um, nice intimate groups where we are able to pour into each person individually um, and discovering how they are unique with the gifts that God has given them. And then we also provide discipleship and mentorship. Mm. We know that your gift will make room for you, but how many of us also know that's your character that's going to keep you in that room? So we want to make sure that they have Christ's character, that they're representing the kingdom wherever God sends them. Uh, throughout our time during the instructional year, uh, Gift Center Scholars, we are visiting the top colleges um, in the state and abroad. And so we do college tours. We have amazing community leaders such as yourself who have come to pour into our scholars who are in similar fields that our students um, are also uh, interested in pursuing. And we also, with our 11th and 12th graders, we also provide a one-on-one college and career coaching. So now it's a little bit more intensive for our upperclassmen. We're working on scholarships. We're working on um, entrance essays. And we're also working on their resumes for colleges. And very excited. Um, uh, we have had uh, gift center scholars who've been accepted to their dream schools. Uh, we've had students accepted to Penn State, Princeton, as of most recently, this cohort, uh, Georgia Tech and UGA. So we're so grateful uh, for what God has been doing uh, through the gift center and preparing our scholars to go to the top schools in the nation, representing the kingdom and really harnessing their God-given gifts and sharpening them in their post-secondary endeavor. So this is definitely my life work for sure. Mm. Amen. I, I love the work that God is doing through the gift center, Larissa. And I've, I've seen up close and personal the impact of what is provided. If someone wants to join, Larissa, how does it start? What's the eligibility like for the gift center to go through the leadership academy? 
Absolutely. So the Leadership Academy, again, is uh, two years. It's for ninth and 10th grade. And we start the application process in January of every calendar year. And so eighth graders who are currently taking accelerated high school Carnegie credits. So these are our scholars who are taking uh, level one French or Spanish, taking um, biology, taking Algebra 1, who are already earning credits and have gone through um, gifted programs throughout elementary school. We start that process as early as January. Um, we actually just closed our enrollment for the fall of this year, but enrollment starts in January and it lasts through May. And our scholars have a four-step process to apply. They and their parents complete our application. And they also complete um, a letter of recommendation so our scholars can ask a pastor, a coach, a teacher, a principal, um, someone who can vouch for their work ethic as well as their character um, as a believer in Jesus Christ and someone who, you know, has been using their gifts actively in the community. And our scholars have an entrance essay. And so they share about their God-given gifts and how they intend to use that gift for the glory of God. Um, and then, of course, uh, we do have a tuition, and so the parents um, have a registration fee that they cover for their uniform, for their scholars, and the materials for that year, and that covers their uh, you know, tuition for the school year. And so it's a four-step process, and uh, in addition to our scholars going through the Leadership Academy, we also, under the umbrella of Gift Center, we provide what's called Gift Center Parent University. Mm. So this is an opportunity for parents of gifted learners, uh, regardless if their child is in high school, we open the Parent University to parents with children as young as kindergarten. And the Parent University, we provide um, encouragement, education, equipping for parents of gifted scholars, and we cover topics like mental health, for gifted children. We cover financial aid and how to pay for college. Um, and then we also provide parents with opportunities to, again, continually sharpen the gifts of their scholars throughout the year with summer internships and summer academies, um, camps that they can really connect to and plug in. Uh, because sometimes parents may not know the right questions to ask. And because so many things um, change uh, within the realm of education, we want to make sure that our parents are speaking the same lingo with their with their scholars and everyone's on the same page so that they are also equipped to train up a gifted child. Mm. Larissa, not just the kids, but the parents too? My God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We, we want everyone to be blessed and equipped that they are walking in purpose. That is huge. Uh, Larissa, uh, talk to us about the process of developing the curriculum. Uh, we know young people are dealing with so many different things. Like you said, they, they, they're they carrying so much modern mm -hmm. day. Um, how yeah. do you decide the topics in the curriculum to develop the students? Because, I mean, it seems like, gosh, stuff is shifting uh, yeah. by the month, by the, by the week, by the year. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Well, most definitely with our scholars and with our curriculum, um, you know, the vision that God uh, downloaded for the gift center is that, you know, this is a 21st century uh, leadership academy. Um, it's very non-traditional in that uh, God wants to equip the Josephs of today, the Esthers of today, the Deborahs of today. And so when you look at these young people in scripture, you know, God did a lot of different things in their lives. And so our curriculum is different in that as well. Uh, we focus on a lot of the 21st century needs that we want our scholars to be ahead um, even before problems present themselves. So with our uh, discipleship series, we spend a lot of time looking at and 
studying the lives of leaders in scripture who are very close to their age and really gleaning uh, the biblical truth and principles from their lives. Uh, we studied things like media literacy and what does it mean now? Of course, our young people and parents can also agree that our children basically grew up and were born into a very digital, high-tech, 5G LTE world. Um, <laughs> not that that's negative. However, it does right. pose challenges, right? So how do we equip our students in that they are still tech savvy, but they also have media citizenship. They have digital citizenship. So we focus on digital citizenship as well. Um, we look at things like creativity. Um, how do you harness creativity? We look at, you know, for example, the life of Joseph. Joseph was a creative problem solver. He was connected to the source. He was connected to God Almighty. So cultivating creativity. And, of course, with gifted learners, um, very thankful to God. I've been uh, certified in gifted education for over a decade and have worked with gifted learners from primary school through uh, secondary school. So really helping parents as well as young people uh, within the gift center to look at the characteristics of gifted learners. What are their needs? Um, how do we continue to sharpen their creativity and to ensure that the fast pace of the world that we're living in today, coupled with with the pressures of today don't snuff out their God-given creativity. Um, you know, we look at things like the whole AI movement, right? We're not against technology. Technology definitely has its place and it has its benefits, but we serve the creator God and creativity is part of our DNA. So we don't want this remnant of young people to lose that creative edge. So we provide these and more to sharpen our scholars and really polish them so that they really are standing apart um, when it is time to move on to the next chapter in their lives, be it college, um, the military, or the next, you know, season that God has for them. Larissa, you, you hit us with another one. My goodness. First, earlier, you said purpose packaged in a person. Then you hit us with digital citizenship. Now, Larissa, <laughs> I've heard of social media training, social media awareness thing. Digital citizenship. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. My God. Yes, sir. Especially the day and the day and time that we're living in. My goodness, folks. Yeah. It, as you're listening to Larissa break this thing down, if if you are not ready for the gift, I don't know what else to tell you. But we'll we'll talk about contact information and website and social media before we end. But. Folks, the gift center is the place your child needs to be. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Two more things. Yes, amen. Two more things before we close out, Larissa. Um, college and career planning. Um, yeah. It seems like the college scene has shifted. It shifted during COVID, and then there's more changes yeah. going on. Uh, so how do you help the parents and the students navigate the financial aid conversation yeah. with scholarships and grants because that can be kind of tricky territory if you're if you're not used to uh, navigating that space. So talk to us about Correct. that. Absolutely, absolutely. We make this declaration for every cohort. We say your child will go to school for free in Jesus' mm. name. Um, we make that declaration because the student loan debt um, among uh, different cultural groups and linguistic backgrounds can be a little bit um, out of alignment compared to other cultural groups. And so we want to make sure that parents understand all of the resources that are available uh, to their scholars so that they can maximize their God-given gifts to get those scholarships. Um, the scripture talks about my people perish for lack of knowledge. 
when I think about my own high school experience, I remember, you know, I went through gifted classes and took AP classes and really, you know, took those rigorous courses and pushed myself, but I did not, and my parents did not know the right questions to ask. And so that's where Gift Center Parent University steps in to help parents understand the lingo, understand the processes, and really can stand alongside uh, and partner with God's plan for their child. Uh, with the Gift Center, we begin to help parents understand the college application process as early as ninth grade by ensuring that, you know, our scholars are not only on track for graduation, but they're also eligible for opportunities that the state of Georgia provides in the form of Georgia dual enrollment. We're very mm. grateful that we have scholars who have graduated with at least a year of college credit um, under their belt uh, by taking advantage of dual enrollment. So we want to get this information to parents early uh, because the earlier you know this information, the better planning. Um, I've seen lots of parents who did not know this type of information. And so at the very end, it's almost like we're scrambling or we're like a chicken with their head cut off. Uh, we're trying to make things come together. But the earlier that you know this information, the better. So we start uh, talking about uh, planning for um, AP credit. We look at uh, dual enrollment. Uh, we start looking at things like the HOPE Scholarship, uh, which some changes have happened with the HOPE Scholarship in the past year, so that parents understand what are the requirements of the Hope Scholarship as early as ninth grade, uh, understanding what uh, scholarships are available to their scholars. So uh, with our 11th and 12th graders, we start looking at scholarships as early as that time so that they can begin applying for those schools. And even if parents have a scholar who's a gifted learner and wants to go out of state, uh, out-of-state tuition should not be a deterrent, right? Uh, if you begin to plan early, I believe that God is pro the vision that he has for your child's life, and he already has made the provision. So when you already have the vision, know that God already has provision in place, and there are so many scholarship opportunities available. It's just a matter of knowing where to look and how to connect your scholar to the amazing financial opportunities that are available. Mm. So insightful there, Larissa. My goodness, all this excitement that's developing, Larissa, let's talk about events. We are almost halfway through the end of the year in yes. 2024. It's crazy. This year is blowing I by. I believe it. Flying uh, it's by. insane. Uh, Larissa, what are you excited about? I know, you know, you just had a graduation uh, recently uh, with the yeah. latest students, but what else is on tap for 2024 for the Gift Center? Absolutely. Well, we are so thankful. Gift Center will be turning five years old in August, so we'll be celebrating year five, uh, and five is the number of grace. And so mm. we are going to be celebrating the many different graces that God has uh, bestowed on every scholar that will come through the gift center. So we're celebrating year five. Uh, we'll be celebrating our fifth cohort. So we're so excited about that. Uh, we have several seniors that will be coming through the gift center this coming fall. So we are excited to celebrate and, and see the new schools uh, that will be dream schools at the gift center will be be adding to and we have some new college tours we are anticipating being able to travel to maybe some out-of-state schools this year for the gift center uh, this fall and we're so grateful to all of our community sponsors and guest speakers and leaders in the community our gift center gift to gift uh, scholarship fund uh, we're believing god to take us to the next level with our scholarship fund uh, we want to be able to bless every scholar our goal is to bless every scholar uh, who finishes the Leadership Academy with a $1,000 starter scholarship 
So that is the vision. And so we are uh, believing God that he is going to exceed that for us uh, so that we can uh, really begin to uh, bless families in an even greater capacity than we already have thus far for the gift center. So just so excited about this latter half of the year. And we know that God always says the best for last. So the second half of the year, we are ready. I love it. Folks, you heard it straight from the founder, coming to a theater near you, <laughs> the gift <laughs> center. Oh, now, I, I how could I forget, Larissa, if you want to talk about uh, the uh, collaboration that we did and then talking yes. with the students, what was that like for you? I'll let you kind of tee it up for what you uh, wanted uh, experience wise for the students. I had a lot of fun, but why don't you yes. talk to them about kind of how that fit into the bigger picture and some of the exercises that we did? Absolutely. Well, again, um, beyond grateful and so honored uh, to have you as, as part of the Gift Center family of uh, guest speakers and community supporters. Our cohort this year um, in the month of May, we have an opportunity to revisit our gift test. Uh, we start doing that in August for every incoming cohort. And uh, Jason led a phenomenal um, presentation presentation for our cohort on the DISC analysis. And this was so powerful, especially since our cohort is, um, you know, moving into their upperclassmen years. And this was so powerful to really confirm my point from earlier. Um, it's not about who do you want to be, but who are you? Um, who has God already made you to be? And so as our scholars went through uh, the DISC assessment, um, each of our scholars were able to take that test and they looked at the results. And as we went through the exercise, I mean, it was like the light bulbs going off and really confirming for our scholars, this is who God has designed me to be. Um, I could see the encouragement. I could see the excitement. I could see the confirmation on their faces and in their responses. And can I tell you, Jason, the DISC assessment, which again, you know you're coming back to give that and do it again <laughs> yeah, for the next cohort. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please and thank you. Um, what it really helps solidify, which is what we share with our leaders as a, as a kingdom leader, is that you have to be comfortable being different. You have to be okay being set apart because that's what leadership is. You are different. Um, a lot of times with our parents, I think um, it's hard to help our students and help our children to recognize the uniqueness of who they are. And so what happens is, especially when they start getting into middle school, high school, and they want to fit in, right? It's like, I want to look like everybody else. I want to talk like everybody else. I don't want to go up the stream. Well, unbeknownst to our young people, when it is time for everybody to kind of start going on their separate paths, be it college or the military or the workforce, well, people want to know what is your secret sauce? What actually makes you different? So for our 16-year-olds to take the DISC assessment and to have that level of self-awareness at 16, I can't even imagine the phenomenal power that's going to come from their lives when they're like 25 because they've already established that self, sense of self-awareness. So um, kudos to you, Jason. That whole exercise, the DISC assessment, typically is administered for older people, but there was such a power for teenagers to go through that because I believe it gave them a level of self-awareness that I think this generation needs to know that they are uniquely made in the image of God. There's no one else like them. And they need to play the role that God has called them to be. And because they're a kingdom citizen, they're never going to fit in. And that's okay because God has a unique plan already carved out for them. Mm. Larissa, it was my pleasure to partner and collaborate. And folks, 
it wasn't so much about what I was doing. It's the caliber of the kids. I was amazed yeah. at the level of self-awareness and them just learning on the fly, being able to break down the assessment. And when we were coaching them through it, the immediate takeaways that they had, yeah. uh, that's just mm-hmm. a testament to what God is doing through you at the gift center. Cause they were, they, I mean, the type of young men that I spent time with, my goodness, yeah. <laughs> just Thank top God. notch, just top notch. Well, Larissa, that's all we've got time for today. You've we've basically just been eating out of your hand this entire oh, time. God. And God. Uh, you have given us your background. You have casted vision. You have told us how you serve the community, the kids, and the parents. And now, Larissa, as we get ready to go, they just want to know how they can contact you. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, again, I'm beyond honored and so grateful to share on your amazing platform. And thank you for trusting me with your listeners and the Fortified Life family. So honored to connect uh, with this family of listeners. Uh, the Gift Center, you can find us on Facebook at The Gift Center. We are also on Instagram under The Gift Center um, 1816, and then also on LinkedIn as well, The Gift Center. So we would be so honored to hear from you. Our, our website is uh, www.thegiftcenter1816.com. Uh, so if you are a parent listening, I pray that the Lord has encouraged you you um, for this next journey of your gifted child's uh, educational endeavors for the year and families who do have rising uh, ninth graders next fall and have eighth graders going into uh, the school year this August. We'd love to connect with you. Um, We can start getting the ball rolling right around Christmas and start of the new year, but it'd be an honor to serve um, new families coming up in the new year. I love it, folks. The founder has spoken. You know where to find her. Kids, you know where to go. More more importantly, parents, you know what to do. (laughs) Larissa, I just want to thank you for hanging out with us on the Fortified Life podcast. Just like Disney does with the Avengers movies. Larissa Jean will return to the Fortified Life podcast at some point (laughs) in the future. There's no doubt about that. But Larissa, thanks for uh, hanging out with us on the show. Thank you so much, Jason. I appreciate you and and so grateful for uh, this collaboration. You're a blessing. Thank you. Thank you, folks. That's all we have time for on this episode, you know how we leave things. Don't compartmentalize your faith in the marketplace. And from the boardroom to the bathroom, God is with you. We'll see you next time on the Fortified Life podcast. Thank you for listening to the Fortified Life podcast. You can catch us live on Wednesdays at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time and on demand. Check out FortifiedLifePodcast.com for more details. To learn how to live out your faith in the marketplace, grab a copy of Jason Davis' book, Fortified, Being Rooted in God's Plan for Work and Business, available on Amazon.